listening to my talk. Uh, in this talk, I want to uh, show you how to, you can use uh, asterisk and XMPP to improve the, the, the user experience, okay? Uh, so who am I? Well, I'm from Brazil, I'm as a CIS admin. Uh, I did my first uh, Astricon, but I'm working with Asterisk and XMPP since 2006, okay? This year I became a XMPP Standards Foundation member uh, because I want to contribute to the protocol. Uh, and for several years I'm, I'm working to improve the user experience. Uh, and uh, part of my, that work that I did in these years, I want to show you here um, to give you ideas of how can you use uh, Asterisk and XMP together to create uh, new features for, for your users. Okay, uh, there is my Twitter account, there is my GitHub and my Bitbucket account. You can find some projects there. Uh, there is my website, but I will show you that later, okay. Uh, but first, why XMPP? Well, XMPP is a standard and uh, open protocol with uh, more than 15 years of existence. Uh, Asterisk already support, uh, uh, supports it, yeah, and it did make it more easy to, to use. Uh, XMP is decentralized, it's secure, uh, you can use TLS to the connections. Um, Asterisk is extensible. Uh, Asterisk has uh, XMP extension protocols, also known as XEP, and XEPs can add new features, okay? And the XMPP Standards Foundation is always working on uh, new features and new XCPs uh, to uh, modernize the, the protocol for the, the new mobile world, okay? There's a lot of uh, things happen right now uh, with the XMPP. Uh, XMPP is also flexible. Uh, I know that m most people use it for instant messaging, but uh, it's been used for other things like IoT, uh, for notifications, push notifications. It's a great protocol that you can adapt to, to other, other uses, other stuff, okay? Uh, most companies already use it for uh, stat messaging. So uh, it's probably that you already has an XMPP server in your in structure. So we can use it for other, other things too. And uh, as an open protocol, an standard protocol, anyone can contribute uh, writing new XCPs, and if you want here, uh, anyone here wants to contribute and, and become an XMP, uh, XSF member, please contact me later, I can uh, explain you how to do it. Uh, it will be great to have uh, more people working in the protocol, okay? Well, I talked about the uh, XCPs, and in, in this talk, uh, we will use a, a lot of uh, basic XCPs, but uh, we, we will use the multi-user chat and the pub sub XCP. Okay, multi-user chat is a group chat. Uh, it's like a chat room. Uh, you can think of it as an IRC channel uh, where lots of people talk with each other, okay? Uh, and the pub sub uh, uh, XCP is an implementation of the publish subscribe pattern uh, where senders uh, Colored publishers send messages to a node, and people, uh, clients, uh, uh, subscribe to that node. Oh, okay, I think that's uh, subscribe that node. And uh, when new messages are published in that node, all uh, the node subscribers receive those messages as soon as, as they are published. Okay, so it's a, a, a way to to distribute information. Uh, we have to, we don't have to uh, send uh, each information for each user. XMP can do it for you. Okay. There's a lot of servers, XMP servers available. Uh, and if you think about the open source servers, the most used, and that's a random uh, order, that's not a, a specific order. We have OpenFire, uh, we have eJabardi, we have Mongoose IM, it's a, a new uh, server. Uh, we have Protody, we have Tegasi, we have to, uh, Isolde, that's a commercial, commercial uh, XMP server used for the uh, Jabber.org, and uh, I think that's used for the military in, in USA too. Um, but in fact, uh, you can use the server that uh, better fits your needs, okay? You just have to pay attention when you, you choose an XMP server uh, to verify it implements all the features that you want, because each uh, XMP server uh, implements different uh, XCPs. There is more than 300 XCPs right now, and uh, 
one of the most uh, one of the XMP server that has uh, lots of XMPs implemented are the XMPD. There's a lot of work in that uh, in that uh, server. Uh, they release a new version each month. It's a, it's a great server. In my case, uh, I I really like to use Open Fire for instant messaging. Uh, I really like the web admin console in OpenFire. It's really easy for your users. Uh, you can uh, uh, delegate the administration of the XMPP server to your customer. You don't have to do it for him because he can uh, uh, do much of the stuff in the, in the browser. It's very easy to use. But uh, for this project that I will show you here, I'm using eJabberD because I believe that the pub sub implementation of the eJabberD is a solid implementation, and I, I use it, it uh, and I think it's, it's great. But uh, it's my, my, uh, my choice, okay? There is there is no, it must work with every, everyone. Well, uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, asterisk and XMPP, and uh, then uh, the support of uh, XMP and asterisk for, was implemented in 2006. It was a basic support. In that time, you, you can uh, send messages for, to XMP users. You can uh, wait for their responses, and you can verify the status of a user, if he's online, if he's off, uh, offline, and this kind of stuff. It's a very simple, but uh, allows the user interaction. I will show you some, uh, the use of these functions uh, soon, OK? In 2010, asterisk 1.8 was released and it added new functionalities, OK? Uh, now the X, asterisk XMPP user uh, can add, uh, um, uh, enter and leave queues, uh, queues, uh, sorry, uh, chat rooms, chat rooms, and send uh, messages to these chat rooms, OK? And if you have uh, several asterisk servers connected to each other, you can use the pub sub support that was implemented, the XMPP pub sub, uh, pub sub support implemented in that version, that uh, provides device distribution uh, state and message waiting indication. That's really interesting, and it, it's still be, being used today, uh, in despite of the new uh, PJC subscribe device extension. Okay. Uh, then, finally, in 2011, asterisk uh, 10 uh, uh, brings the contact support for XMPP. Uh, the old uh, Jabber resource was deprecated in favor of the, the new uh, XMPP resource. And the contact support uh, brought a whole new way to uh, allow user interaction, because now uh, the users uh, can send messages to the, to the asterisk. Uh, wh what it means? Uh, you have an asterisk uh, user, I'll show you that in a few minutes. And you can uh, send, this send a message for the user, and the message was, uh, is received in the dial plan, and you can process this message. It's really interesting. It's the real integration, and now you can say that XMP is really talking with asterisk, and vice versa, OK? <clears throat> well, uh, I will make some demonstrations of some things, some basic things in the, in the beginning. Uh, I will just have to show you how I'm, I'm, how I'm doing this. Uh, I am connected in my asterisk server here, OK, in my pidgin client, OK. Uh, in my mobile, I'm registering my extension 1000. Uh, and this extension is uh, also uh, a, an agent in my support queue, OK? In my laptop, you can see that I had another extension re registered. Oh, it's the extension 2000, OK? And you can think of this extension as your customer uh, phone, because uh, my X3 server doesn't have a PSTN connection. So I, I can have another way to, to provide a, a, a uh, and, uh, incoming uh, calls. So I'm using this extension to uh, simulate incoming PSTN calls so we can think of it of your uh, customer telephone, OK? So let's start. First, I will show you, like I was, let me, let me where is it? I will show you the earlier caller identification. It's a very simple use of the asterisk integration with XMPP. It's supported since uh, version 1.4. 1, 1 I'm using it for years right now, and uh, with that, we can uh, provide your user, your agent, uh, with the caller identification 
before the extension starts to ring. So uh, the call enters in the asterisk dial plan, and you can already send a, 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 a message to the user, and the, your customer can uh, listen some greeting news, and your user already knows that someone is calling him, and can start to prepare to talk with your customer. So let me show you. As, oops, no, no, I will show again. No. As you can see, the, the, it was the blue, but the notification doesn't appear well. It's strange. Oh, man. I think that's open in another, in another workspace. Basic, but as you can see, I'm getting the user identification. When the, the that just one more time. Sorry, I didn't test it with workspaces. But you can see, my customer is, is uh, listening to the greeting messages, but my agent already knows that user one is calling him. So he can start to prepare to, to talk with the customer, OK? Uh, then uh, with asterisk uh, version 1.8, uh, this kind of stuff can be, be uh, you can do that, send the message to a, a, a chat room. So you can think that you have a, a support chat room, and all your support members are online in the chat room. And you want that uh, when a customer calls to, the, to your company, all users know that. I've had, I had some users there. I will call this a chat room, a normal chat room. They created the side chat room. It's the, it's my site conference room, OK. And I will call, oops, wrong, wrong extension, OK. It's a new notebook, I'm not. Uh, now, the same thing happens, but now all the users that are in the online in the chat room can know that user one is calling him. It's calling the, 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 your, your company, OK. That's really basic, but. These few seconds that you can uh, that you can give to your uh, to your agents, it's, it's precious. I work uh, with uh, with in a support team. I know that you have this kind of information. Uh, um, if you can uh, give to your agents much information, it, it's it's precious. It, it it can respond quickly to your customer. Okay. Now. I want to show you something more, more real, OK? Let's imagine that you have an IVR, and your customer uh, calls that IVR, uh, to the IVR. He has to identify himself uh, with the code. And uh, after that, uh, the, the call was redirected to a queue, let's say a support queue, OK? But let's say that you have the support queue, and your support team has uh, 10 members, for example. But at this moment, just five members are logged on the queue. And 10 of, uh, 10, two, sorry, two, two of them are paused because they are in the lunch, lunch time, OK? So in fact, you had three logging agents in your, in your queue. We can send that kind of information just to the three members. That the people that really need to get this kind of information don't have to say the information to the chat room that everybody knows or to the 10 users because it's, it, it will be annoying, it, it will be useless. You can send the information just to the online users using AMI. I'm using AMI. All these things that I'm showing you, I will, I will publish later in my website, okay? It's basic in dial plans and some AGI scripts writing Python. But we, we can do that. So I will, I will show you that it will be almost the same thing, but a little bit different, OK? OK. Uh, for support, press 1. Enter a customer code. No, oops, sorry. Now. What? Oh, uh, well, oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now, you, as you can see, I already uh, identified my user in a database. It's a different, it's, it's a, uh, a better project. Uh, you can connect in a database and uh, using an AGI script. And now I can show for my user 
that support, uh, that, that, uh, that customer company one is calling my support team. Uh, in my former job, you, you use that in a daily basis. It's, it, it's very useful. I, I can say that to you. But we can make it even better. And now, now it, uh, it's where the, the things are really improved. Uh, my old, uh, old colleague, my, my friend Diego Morales, has an idea, and I, I put it here, that to list the last five tickets from your ticket system to your, of, your, of your customer queue. I'm using a request tracker. I don't know if you uh, know request tracker. It's a great help desk uh, system, a ticket system. And uh, I will show you what I mean. It's better to show you what I mean. Okay, support, press one. Now, now we are, we are providing uh, for the user uh, a, a real good information because, as you can see, my agent knows that the customer company two is calling, that the last five support tickets that I, I, I uh, create for that user Three are resolved, an asterisk update, I link phones providing the resolved, Kali can hear the voice, caller voice resolved, but we have two open tickets. We have a nice stale, uh, ticket called fax errors. Maybe I'm, we are waiting for a response for our customer. And we have an open ticket, IAX registration failure. So now uh, you, your uh, agent uh, knows what happens with that, with that customer, okay? And we provide the uh, links for the request tracker. So before uh, your uh, extension of your agent starts to ring, he, your agent can open the, the links and uh, read about it. And this is something that really can improve. Uh, now we are really, can, uh, we are really improving the, the relation and the experience of your agent, because you can give the agent information that are really important, and you are uh, uh, improving the experience of your customer because your customer, you have responses quickly, okay? And this is just an example, okay? You can use it, uh, and you can provide the, the uh, kind of information that more, uh, uh, better fits in your, in your scenario, okay, in your company, you can, but uh, any, any kinds of information is just an uh, AG, 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 AGI script that uh, used to publish that kind of information here. And uh, just, just a moment. Okay. So it's basic, uh, basic uh, integration. I'm not using context here yet. And now I'm start to use the context part, OK? Let me, sh OK. Oh. In fact, I in fact, okay, here, okay. Yeah, well, with the advent of the context support, I decided to try to make some, uh, some, box, some proofs of concept. Uh, I will show you three here. But it's the first, it has some years. It's my GitHub account. Uh, it provides integration using context. I use an AGI that process the XMP message. So if, if you send uh, a message to the, the, to the asterisk user, help, it uh, processes the help message and answers. I will show you that uh, in a few minutes. It uses asterisk 10 and uh, both because we need the contact support, okay? Uh, that we can find some links about the asterisk and XMP integration. The first link is the second most uh, viewed the link in my website, more than uh, 7K uh, views in the last two years. I think that people are really interested in this kind of integration. And I'm trying to work it uh, more. Well, I'm not, sh uh, I'm not uh, talk uh, much about the SDEMO because it was the inspiration of my next project, uh, Cybolt. The, but I will uh, show you a, a little bit, okay? Just, just a moment. So here are my S demo. It's my asterisk demo server user, okay? And I can send a message for him. Help. And now I think that I can uh, maximize the screen. Sorry. Okay. 
Now, uh, my AGI processes my help, my, help, my help command and send me a list of valid commands. So I can, I can do a lot of uh, stuff with that. But it's my first project, it, it's much better now. Uh, I can call to a CPAN extension. Uh, I can uh, call and play a message for a CPAN extension. I'm just using CIP here for uh, in the proof of concept, but you can use a external number, there's no problem with that. There's uh, some uh, color ID, a DND off and on a lead, uh, there that I'm not using anymore because it uses the asterisk internal database and dial plan that was deprecated in the, nest, uh, in the uh, new versions of my, my, my implementation, but uh, uh, there's information, let me say, uh, info XMPP, let's, let's say info XMPP. Okay, uh, server jabber, dot moon dot insert dot com dot we are available open fire server 403 let's start in uh, okay last uh, sunday september 11. info void okay asterisk version 14001 started last uh, september 27 okay reloading uh, well uh, let me show another things uh, who am I? For example, who am I? Okay, I'm Marcel, but uh, who am I in the system? I know that my uh, uh, XMPP user here is uh, MHTRs, in Portuguese, please, it's very complicated to say English, uh, at jabber.moonopensource.com.br, but okay, I am Marcel, extension 1000, my extension is 1000, and my Jabber ID is the, my Jabber ID that listed here. And uh, we need to act, uh, uh, link the user with the extension. I use a database for that because the uh, system needs to know who I am, in fact, to uh, make the calls. So if I call for an extension, the asterisk needs to know who, I'm, who he needs to call back, okay? Uh, there is interesting uh, stuff in that. Uh, in that as demo that it's the monitoring monitoring show monitoring items i can monitor uh, some items here i can monitor queues and uh, cp and iax uh, peers okay so uh, i can monitor the status and when the status of the this monitor the, the of the monitoring peer changes uh, the asterisk send me an automatic uh, uh, message show me for example if i log in the queue he will show me that a queue has the, a member, okay? And I can, uh, for example, I can uh, add uh, new monitoring items on the fly. So let me say that I want to monitor SIP 1000. Okay. As demo starts to monitor the SIP 1000 extension, okay. If I use monitoring again, uh, there is no information, let's, let's state, because it doesn't pull the, the, the information yet. But as you can see, you can use it uh, in a, a very simple way. Uh, I can so, uh, show the status of a peer. I can show the status of uh, all peers that I'm connected, OK? Some information, uh, AIX, and uh, all kinds of stuff, OK? But uh, as I said to you, this is not uh, the main uh, uh, the main goal in this talk. It's just to show you uh, what we can do uh, with the integration. It was my first integration, and uh, now it's better. So after as demo, I decided that uh, better than uh, oops, better than using uh, AGI, maybe I can use two uh, 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 demo. A uh, bot, a daemon created in uh, Python, but based in my uh, first uh, POC called as demo. So many of the features are shared. Uh, there are new features that send the text messages, okay? Uh, it's not working because it depends on the hardware you are using. Uh, and in this project, I create some kind of a framework that allow uh, anybody create new features and new monetary items. So uh, you can easily add uh, a new resource that's specific for your, uh, your, your needs, and you can easily add uh, a new monitoring item that's specific for your needs. 
uh, in the uh, case of a new plugin, you have to use Python because I'm using the AppC plugin framework. But in the case of the monitoring items, you can use uh, whatever you want. I, some of the items that I'm using, you're using a bash script to, just to prove that it's possible to do it, okay? So, as I said, this is to add new features in monitoring alerts. I will show you a little later. Asterisks 11 and above. But you can adapt to older versions. You have made to uh, remove some features, okay? Uh, but uh, you can do whatever you want with that. You can do whatever you want and you can monitor whatever you want. It's just not asterisk specific. Uh, because you can, for example, call your customers using your own system data. Let's say that you uh, have the code of your customers and you want to call your customer company three. That's the code is uh, 22. So you can, uh, for example, uh, uh, write code and call 22 and the system will call. Let me show you in it how it works. Oops, where am I? Oh, here. Okay. Uh, different of the S-Demo, the boat uh, entered in a, sh in a chat room, okay? So uh, it not uh, interact directly with your, with your user. It can, it can interact, but in fact, it was created to uh, be a member of a chat room. So you need to refer for uh, the boat name because boat needs to know that you want to talk with him. And uh, I don't want that uh, the boat interfere in the uh, other tokens on the on the uh, the room okay so I, let's say it's something strange okay i didn't understand blah blah blah, blah image test but you can type cybot help to discover valid and maybe new comments okay okay let cybot help cybot help and as you can say it's something like the uh, s demo there's a change log that you can uh, see. There is a call that you call for a number. You can enter a queue. You can have the history of the, the uh, chat room. You can have the last users that enter and leave the chat room. Uh, you can leave a queue. You can pause a queue. It's very interesting because, uh, well, I I'm, I'm, I'm need to go to the bathroom, OK? So pause queue, support, OK? My extension is paused in the queue. And uh, I don't receive uh, uh, oh, I don't receive more uh, calls. Uh, I can play a message. I was talking with uh, Herman. Uh, I think I was talking to you yesterday. There is a company that needs to play some messages in asterisk if the system uh, is um, offline. So, uh, for example, uh, you have you has a system, an online system to attend your customers, but you are online, you are not online, okay? So you don't want to answer all the questions and explain that uh, situation for all your users. So you can uh, upload a message, a uh, 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 you can save a message, and you can uh, say to Cybolt, play message on. So you have an, uh, at Cybolt you wrote a uh, variable in the asterisk internal database, in your, in your dial plane, you need to read this uh, variable and see if it's on or off. If it's on, you play the message, hang up. If, if it's off, just uh, enter in the queue or anything you want. That's uh, one of the fac uh, facilities that you can improve because you can do it uh, uh, on your needs, OK? Uh, show monitoring items. OK, let's show you monitoring items. It's, uh, it's interesting. Oh, my time. I both show monitoring items. Oops, oh, okay. It's like uh, the old uh, monitoring items in the, okay, that I show you in the S-Demo, but as you can see, I can monitor process. I can monitor anything I want because I'm using an external monitoring system. That's really easy to create new features. Oops, I think I had a problem. Well, uh, let me, okay, uh, where, where else? Sorry, I didn't, okay, you get this.
I, I think I destroyed the microphone. Sorry, man. Uh, okay. Uh, I can, for example, Cybolt show plugins. And now I know all the plugins that my system has. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, it's uh, there's a, some kind of template, and then you can uh, to create new temp uh, create new plugins. It will be very easy to do it. Okay. Uh, let me show another thing that I implemented here. For example, the Cybot Remi. Am I okay? My extension 1000, my color ID Marcelo. Am I allowed to call? Yes. Am I allowed to send SMS? Yes. But your users can, uh, maybe you can, uh, don't want to give it the, the, your users permissions to send the text messages. So there's a permission system in the Cybot 2, okay? So that's, uh, that's uh, the, the idea of Cybot. Basically, uh, you can do whatever you want and you, you can talk later if you want to give more information. I, let's, uh, as I said before, I will publish everything in a post in my blog, but this, this project is already in my GitHub account, okay? And uh, my last uh, project here, just a moment. Now that I destroyed the microphone, it will be very difficult. Okay, no problem, let's go. And my last project here, I call it the IVR data delivery. Uh, and the idea of this project is to allow the integration of your uh, XMPP server, uh, mostly based on uh, IVR of your, XMP, your asterisk server, okay, sorry, uh, allows the integration of uh, your uh, IVR uh, in your asterisk with uh, your own systems, okay, the help desk systems, custom systems, etc. Uh, I'm using the XMPP PubSub, and the XMPP libs are available for most languages, so it's not uh, impossible to, to change your, your custom softwares or your third-party softwares to adapt to this, the, this idea. I'm using ARI to create an, an, a, a Q application, a custom Q application. I'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. I'm using, of course, Asterisk 13 because of the ARI support that I need. Well, why I created that? <laughs> Uh, just to tell you a little story, short story. Uh, in the beginning of September, I called to a customer services in Brazil, and uh, I identified myself in the IVR, and I heard all these automatic messages, and then I decided that, uh, no, I need to talk with a human agent, okay? I was redirected to the queue, and when the agent uh, answers my call, oh, hello, so, uh, sir, What's your identification code? Well, I just entered in the IVR. Oh, but uh, I need that to inform it again. Why? It's, it's, it's really annoying. It's, it happens uh, in Brazil, it's frequent. I don't know what happens here in the USA, in Europe. I, I know how the, the customer service uh, work in the, in the other places, but in Brazil, it's very common to, that you have to identify yourself uh, one, two, uh, if I had to be redirected to a different department, a different sector of the, the, the company, probably I would have to identify myself a third time. It's, an, an, it's annoying for the customer, it's unnecessary. And okay, I understand that uh, it could be difficult to integrate your asterisk IVR uh, with legacy systems or maybe with third party systems. I, I understand. Uh, that uh, each company has a different flow in the IVR, and uh, it's not a, 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 a easy task. Okay, okay. But I start to think how, using asterisk, how can we try to solve that, okay? And then I remember of the XMPP and the PubSub uh, extension. And what's the idea? As I said, uh, the XMPP, Libraries are available for most languages, uh, Python, Go, uh, Java, uh, every language, okay? So <clears throat> the idea was to uh, did, uh, make a, a little change, 
a little, I know, but a, a little change in your custom system uh, and your asterisk and how it works. First, your asterisk must uh, subs uh, must be uh, connect to a, a XMP server and subscribe as a ser as a sender to a pub sub node. And your application, you should uh, you must uh, change your application uh, in, a f uh, in a way that the application uh, has an XMP client and uh, the XMP client subscribes to the same pub sub node. Uh, each user, each extension has a one different node. You can link it in your data database, okay. So, when a new uh, call enters uh, in, your, in, your, in your asterisk, and your customer identifies itself, and uh, your application knows for, uh, for uh, what uh, agent the call uh, must be redirected. The, your application publishes the data in the PubSub, and your custom server, your custom system, oh, oh, so, sorry, uh, receives that data, and now do whatever it wants with that data, okay? It's not hard, it's not difficult. And for uh, proof that it, it works, okay, I had to make, I create some uh, AGIs that are available in the project, but I will show, I have to create two, uh, two Python scripts. The first Python script, software.py, simulates, simu simulates the uh, help desk system, for example, okay? Uh, it connects to the XMP server as a client uh, and subscribe to the node, and uh, oops, oops, and it starts to uh, listen to that uh, node. And I had to create an uh, ARI uh, queue, uh, my own queue for asterisk. I, I, I can use the own native asterisk queue because it, uh, I will lose control for that application. And I, I want to have uh, entire control of the process because when I receive the message and the message enter in my queue, and um, my queue defined for what user the message will be redirected, I need to, to uh, publish the data in the uh, node of that extension. I can do that with the native asterisk queue. Okay, so I will show it. It's very basic, <laughs> Bas very, very basic, just a moment. Uh, okay, let me, here, okay. So here I have my queue, and here I have my software. I will, I will start my ARI queue, okay. Start my year. I oops, oops, lost connection. Oops, lost connection. Just a moment. Just some, just a moment. Oh my. There. So now I, I, this is my queue and this is my software. Let me, oops, not good. Okay. <coughs> my software, okay. I will start my queue, my queue application. Okay, my queue application started. Connecting my ARI, server connected. Oh, so, oh, sorry, thank you, thank you. Uh, the ARI is connected, the XMP server is connected, DB Postgres is waiting for calls, okay? Now we start my software application, my simulated software application. And okay, it's connected. Uh, and my asterisk, my other server that I use for tests, um, uh, connecting the pub sub uh, of my asterisk, uh, my XMP server, sorry and subscribe it to extension, okay? So I, now I make a new call using this new IVR that uh, has this functionality, okay? Welcome to MOS. For support, press one. What? Inform your customer code. As you can see, the data was 
received by the okay let me finish that and, and, until it starts to as you can see the call was entered in the queue the item was published data one company one you can use it whatever you want just my my was publishing the note okay and then my software my, the xmp client in my software received the date automatically there is nothing that you need to do because uh, that's how PubSub works. And now you can use uh, that uh, information with whatever you want. You can, uh, for example, uh, thinking about request tracker, I could send the queue of my customer to, and I can use that information to open the last, uh, last tickets on the open tickets of that queue in, for my user in the web browser, okay? So that's the idea. Uh, my time uh, is almost done. I have two minutes. Uh, I hope that's just a moment. I hope that uh, I can give you some ideas of what you can do. Just, uh, it's just proof of concepts, like I said. Uh, and you can uh, find me. I will, I will put my thanks uh, uh, before the questions because there is some uh, information on how to uh, find me, at my XMP user, my email. And my website, okay. And if one here has questions, I think we don't have much time, but we can talk later, okay? Thank you very much.